Next up, it's Jim. IP addresses a modest proposal. Oh, evening all. I'm not going to do anything brave like CB by me. Right. From the earliest days of the internet, the designers of the internet defined names and addresses as being different things. Items on the internet should have a name which people use, and they should have an address, but the addresses are really only for the machines, and people should use names whenever they can. Okay? And this is broadly something that everybody agrees with. Um, you just have to look at the amount of work that's gone into the creation and maintenance of the global DNS system. And talking of DNS, if we go back to the original ER documents of the modern DNS system, RFC 1034, it mentions humans in a couple of places in connection with the words annoying and can wreak havoc. From the earliest days, it's been clear that we really want to keep people away from IP addresses. Now, there's some important work moving in this direction was done way back in 1995. This is how you start discouraging people from using IP addresses. But damn it, they're still at it. We obviously need some sterner measures. Now, a couple of years ago, I ran to this fellow. He's Alexander Meyerhofer. Uh, he's the head of research at NIC.at, the um, Austrian uh, country domain registry. And he's had this germ of an idea, which we've been working on, about a discouraging representation for IP addresses. Now, if you're going to start with human script and discouraging, well, we all know, thanks to Andy's brilliant talk, that you've got to start with Unicode. You can't get much more discouraging than that. And in the spirit of this, we have, in the spirit of this and Jonathan Swift, we have a modest proposal. The Internationalized Deliberately Unreadable Network Notation, or I don't know for short, the next step in stopping humans from making IP address errors by making IP addresses unusable by humans. This follows in a long history of computer industry GUI progress. The way it works is this. You treat the address as a bit string, and you generate UTF-8 from the bit string, which you represent in Big Endian, using this algorithm. You first choose the length of UTF-8 sequence you want to try generating, so one to four octets. And you fill in the missing bits you need from those octets from the address bit string. And you repeat until you've used up the whole address. Now, you obviously may need some padding, in which case you can choose padding bits, choose the padding bits yourself to maximize the amount of confusion. And what you're aiming for, because obviously you've got a lot of choice in this, is to generate the most confusing UTF-8 that you possibly can. And we define three confusion levels, minimum, satisfactory, and delightful. A minimum confusion level, I don't know, must contain at least one UTF-8 sequence that's greater than one in length. And it must contain one character disallowed in IDNA 2008. If you've never met IDNA 2008, lucky, lucky, lucky you, it's the standard that lets you have non-ASCII in domain names. Satisfactory confusion. You must conform to minimum confusion plus have at least one non-printable character. We particularly recommend form feed. Um, characters from at least two different scripts and at least one character from the symbol category. Building even further upon that to our maximum delightful confusion level, that's satisfactory confusion plus characters and scripts with different directionalities, characters classified as confusable. Yes, Unicode has a specific category of confusable characters. This is brilliant. And at least one emoji. Now, one further thing. Um, this means that there are multiple possible encodings for a single address. So you should pick a random one to further enhance the general level of confusion. Uh, now, we're not the only people who, um, who think that this is a good idea. And I'm pleased to report that as of about a year ago, I don't know, is now an international standard. Note the date. Note in particular that it's expressed in a Russell acceptable format. And now, finally, a bit of late breaking news. I am delighted to report, I learned at the weekend, there is now a third party open source implementation of I don't know in Python. It's on PyPy. Take a bow, Lily Foster. Brilliant piece of work. Now, that Py, uh, <coughs> this implementation includes a translator from what we will now refer to as the legacy notation. 
Here's an example of the kind of output you get. Now, we're hopeful that you will agree with us that these addresses are... <laughs> Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, that's important. Uh, it's an important endeavor for the, <laughs> the internet. And I think I personally live at the delightful confusion level at all times. What's orange? It sounds like a carrot. Obviously, it's a parrot.